Hi there, and welcome to episode 177 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I'm James Brown, as usual, the man who takes speed every day, as well as his ADHD meds. And I'm joined, as usual, by Dr. Alex Connor, who's established himself as a world leader in processing body parts. And sadly, we're still missing Mrs. Audi HD um, mm. because of, I don't know, laziness. Um, who probably would have thought this was an episode about the film Speed 3 Processing Control or, or something. Mm. This is where you can tell she's not here, Al, because A, I was yeah. able to finish a joke, um, yeah, yeah. and B, it was a shit joke. It was so... a really shit joke. <laughs> speed 3. She pre- she probably you, you had to say Speed 3 because we've done Speed and Speed 2 film-related yeah, punchlines that were equally I know. shit. I know, and Speed 3 processing control. Can you imagine? <laughs> Where's the bomb, for God's sake? Sorry. Anyway, Alex, Hi. Sorry, what did you say? You, right. Yeah. You, mm. You're doing you're doing slow. I'm guessing you're doing slow processing, I'm guessing, yeah. which is predictable. And honestly, that's on me. I should have guessed. Anyway, I said hi. Hello. Fuck me. <laughs> if you do this for the entire podcast, and they are getting longer then it, this is going to be a two-hour job. At least you didn't double say... Thing. <laughs> double thing. Uh, yeah, I'm very tired. I haven't slept. I'm off I'm off on my dings at the minute. Listen, the, the, benefit, from, the benefit from that is that at least you didn't say what I was expecting, which would be something like I'm slow processing or whatever, because you didn't get hello in there. Yeah. Um, anyway, how are you both missing? No, that's not going to work. Um, just you, Alex, old pal. Right. There's no way. There's no way I read that last <laughs> properly. I'm really surprised that you actually did the bit a bit that I wrote properly. I actually wrote in the script. There's no way James mm-hmm. read that properly. Mm-hmm. I'm excellent. Thank you. Very excited to be here as always. In the monologue last week that Sam didn't do, so we did. We just talked about our new book, and there was a press release that came out. But almost literally everybody, and there was a lot of people who commented mm-hmm. on the book and the press release said the same thing which was it's released in march four months away that's a thousand months away or something probably mm. don't know then they said oh oh what's the name of the book adhd unpacks is it and what's the isbn number and pre-ordering details they they said they said that then typically it did you know you're probably shitter at marketing than you are at being interesting or valuable on a podcast I don't know how to mark. Uh, one of the, one of whom sent us a letter. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know. I don't care anymore. Yeah, we've had a letter from one of those people that asked about the ISBN. Mm. Do you need that? What is an I? I don't even know what an ISBN number is. It's a book it's thing. A, yeah, book thing. God knows. That's right, James. I'm gonna just gonna find out who read the, wrote the letter. Okay, okay, okay. It was a. <laughs> it's Robert from Kidderminster, to James. It says no. I I know. It says, somehow, I listened to your last episode on fatigue. And did you know that James has fatigue every time he gets the red eye back from Transylvania? I don't mean he gets an aeroplane. He gets red eyes from the wind. (laughs) He goes on to say, and he's he's tired because of flapping his stupid bat wings because he's a Dracula, because he commutes from Romania in this one. And the red eye bit isn't related to the fatigue bit. That's more about the flapping, which is helpful. I like how he that that addendum. I guess I don't know explained. Ooh. I know explained part of it. And actually, to correct Dad, I get pink eye, not red eye. Um, but <laughs> I'll be honest, you you you're at least maintaining a consistent quality. I guess. Thank you, James. We have had a real letter. Can I read it out? Oh yes, you can. No. <laughs> this is from Sally on Patreon or Patreon. Don't know. And it says. Hello, triple threat. That's how I think of you. Also, what the police call me here. I don't know why I'm doing those jokes. It's because Sam's not here. Hello, triple Sorry, Sally. Hello, triple threat. threat. That's how I think of you. I just wanted to say that hearing the sincerity in James's voice when talking about emotional intelligence moved my soul. I wonder if you really realise what a treasure trove of research, storytelling and testimony this podcast is. So if you don't realise, take it from me. It is. If you do, then all power to you. Thank you, X. Thank you, Sally. No, we don't. It, I, no. At all. I honestly don't. 
it's and it's that really hard to ding. yeah ding that that was lovely i do suspect yeah. it's probably you that said something because from memory it's normally you that says <laughs> things that move people's souls to be honest but if i did say something incredible obviously i've forgotten anyway i don't have any do i so it's unlikely yeah but you but people are always write in saying oh god when alex said this it was amazing and or obviously james is a cunt those are the two things we generally <laughs> tend to get oh apart from the millions of messages about how ace sam is obviously anyway yeah. as usual um this anyone who's ever skied up a podcast oh. is a tragedy in three parts i have to acknowledge here that there may be some bias in the fact that i wasn't allowed to go on a school screen skiing trip as a child because both mum and dad were made redundant in the same week oh. and we couldn't afford it um so i have a bit of a bias against people who ski i like skiing and that confer- and that confirms my bias. Of course you do, Alex. <laughs> of course you do. Anyway, last time around, I think was about ADHD and fatigue. And this week, we're going to be discussing ADHD and processing speed. Um, thanks to Amelia for, for suggesting this topic. And I know that she is interested as well. The three parts include the Jimmy Cricket. Is it Jimmy or Jiminy with the left right on the boots? Funnily enough, I had this exact conversation with somebody that I, I work with, and A, we agreed mm. that Jimmy Cricket was the Liverpoolian comedian, B, that Jiminy Cricket's from the Disney thing, a little mm. cricket, and C, they thought and said that Jimmy Cricket wore his boots on back to front, which isn't right. <laughs> and then it really made me laugh at how would you get your feet in? Doesn't matter, you know who you are. <laughs> Anyway, um, the Jimmy Cricket, we now know evidence, Alex is psycho. Education Monkey talking about the evidence around processing speed. In part two, we'll give just our two personal reflections um, and something approaching, but not actually being tips on processing speed. And then we'll answer some of your questions sent in in the final section as, well, you know the next bit. So, Alex, my yeah. God, my, pun, my puns are bad. If you're up to speed so far, speed three, speed three, tell us about ADHD and processing speed. Okay, I will. And I'll try and go slowly, James, so you can keep up <laughs> processing, processing speed. It's, it's how quickly somebody can take in information and understand that information and decide on something and respond to information in their brain box. Hmm. It's not a measure of intelligence games but rather how quickly someone can process and respond to visual or verbal or anything else information it's a critical cognitive function though it's how we get shit done Mm. and it influences many if not all daily tasks solving problems reading reacting to visual or auditory stimulus essentially describes the fluency that that our brain Mm. receives information and and understands it and reacts to it decides on it and responds to that information so it's the the the, how fluid that is it's the oil in the machine oleum ex machina if you like james i don't like that and i don't like you so pretentiosum wankero more like it i i when i wrote only of it, I had to Google the Latin for oil, obviously, but I, I was so happy with how like riled it would make you privately. Fucking bastard. This, so this fluency, mm. this, this, the, the well oiled brain machine is arranging all of us. All people have some people are quick, some are less quick, James. And the processing speed varies across the general population due to millions of factors genetics education age environmental influences but in all of us it's, it typically involves three main components and we get a boring list clacks on to boot to boot das boot you know das boot the film james it's actually das I, boat yeah. the, uh, double o is pronounced o like so it's boat boat is boat i mean it's about a u-boat so i kind of guessed yeah yeah it probably like Eva wasn't, Brown wasn't as well like, it's wasn't about the captain's cool. boot, which you wore backwards. I guess it was probably. <laughs> Come here. There's more. There's, there's, there's more missiles. It's, it's a, a terrible war. <laughs> Number one. Mm. These are the components of processing speed, not German submarine films. Number one, input speed. So the time taken to perceive information and interpret it as, as vision or, or hearing or whatever. Mm comes from a sensory place like an eye or an ear or 
from having too much hair for a man of your age, something like that. <laughs> Part B is the decision speed. So the time taken to make a decision or draw conclusions based on the information, either actually knowing you're doing it or your you, you subconscious doing it for you. When you have to choose a revel, someone offers you revels, they're all the same, they're all equally lovely. So you should just so, be able to choose one. But my, my my biggest issue with the charlatans, if you remember the band, was in their first big hit, they had a line uh, on their first album, um, life is like a box of revels, you're looking for the orange one, which is the worst revel by a fucking mile. I think what I'm about right surprise hard toffee? Yeah, I like that. Surprise hard toffee, well, like, get in. What you get didn't in. expect, you thought it was going to be yeah. a, a coffee, best one, and it hurts your mouth, get to fuck. But, 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 but coffee is the best one. I, only, I, I, I do think that, but I only said it because I knew what you would do. <laughs> well, Delta, to at C, or part mm. three, output speed. It's the time taken that we need to generate a response. Like, mm, that's the best revel. It's coffee flavoured. In the world of science, you can measure those three mm. things in a lab in different types of experiment. They're all terribly flawed, obviously, but... If you want to know what they are, there's, there's different ways to measure reaction time. Boom. And then you see how when people go, ah. or how they're reading fluency um, or just timed problem solving activities of all sorts of things. They do lots in the lab for that. Right. So you said, I think you said it varies in the general population. So how does it differ between people in the normal population? It's <laughs> hang on a minute right obviously yeah. you've been fucking with the script are you yeah. is that meant to be a brummy accent so so how or no that's what you wrote at the start it says so I? how does it differ oh amazing yeah. and i just rewrote so how at the end Brilliant. because it made me laugh so how hats brown off, cow hats off mate <laughs> thank you uh are you asking about muggles james mm, yes <laughs> i think got yeah no we sometimes really earnestly and overly seriously say you can't say you're a typical person because there isn't one and blah 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 and then sometimes we also say muggles which is a, a kind of inconsistency that i'm here for <laughs> it's a bell-shaped curve with everyone in the gen pop um young to old in all people processing of information speed improves with age from children especially in their early years who tend to have slower processing speeds, and then up to adults. And then as, as we age, the cognitive abilities and neural networks um, decline a bit. So they develop to adulthood and adolescence, and then they start to decline much later in life. Um, the slowing is, is natural changes in brain structure as we get older, uh, reduction in white matter, this thing, synaptic plasticity, which we hear a lot about. And in these, I want, you know, what rhymes with the Booberman labs? You know, these sort of <laughs> neuroscience bros who, who say, because synaptic plasticity, that means that if you eat my, this supplement, or have loads of like a blue light in your eyes for my glasses, you will be able to do something. No, it's all bollocks. Hmm. But there is some small amount of synaptic plasticity, it would appear, in our brains. And that gets a bit stiffer, James, Dang. as we age. Definitely <laughs> right. So uh, as a result, older ad adults may take longer to learn new information, but like very much older, not, hmm. it, it seems to my, be... My age, kind of 400 years Ish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you're a whippersnapper of 60, 70 years old, yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't mean that when you're 40, you can't learn new tricks. That's more about having the time and inclination. So this is all about the brain then. The, the brain, the brain. This is all about the brain, <laughs> is it? It is about the brain. What was the thing you, what was the Brian thing you want to say? Brian, Brian. This happened. This, Brian, this happened, Brian. We haven't done this that happened, for ages. No, no, this happened the other day when I checked into a hotel again and said it, it should be under the name Brian. Brian? No, no, Brian. Br I, I don't. Yeah, I, you do Brian, say it in a Brian way. I don't. Oh, fucking hell. Obviously, I must do it anyway. Carry on. Was your question, is this all about the brain? Oh, yes, James. Cognitive <laughs> processes probably involve the brain. You, do you want to go ahead and pop a sticker up on your bathroom chart? Because you've done, a, you've been clever. Um, it is largely governed by the brain's neural networks. We talk about these all the time, and they'll probably, obviously, in regions like attention, mm -hmm. coordination, perception, executive functions. All of this probably sounds familiar to our lot already. Largely, 
in the brain is a word that scientists use because we don't know it isn't in other places and, mm. and there are sensory organs and reflexes and non-brain neurons and all of that. However, the three primary brain areas thought to contribute to processing speed are, firstly, our old friend, the prefrontal cortex. Can I just say PFC from now on? Is that quicker? Mm. Now I've said yeah, it out loud. Well, not, it's about, I don't know, three quarters of a second quicker. So, yeah, it's worth it in a one-hour podcast. <laughs> PFC. <laughs> Together, there's also though the parietal lobes. I think of that as this, like the saddle, the saddle of the of the brain. If it were a cow that you were riding, <laughs> and then there's the white matter tracts that connect these regions. I, I white matter tracts at Glasgow in '94. Uh, Definitely about that. Yeah, I can't imagine you being at Glasgow. Although I have been at a festival with you before, and that was interesting stories not to follow. So there is one interesting story that you couldn't be asked to go and see Oasis' last ever gig. You I know. <laughs> you yeah, but I don't. I don't. I don't like them. So and that's why I'm not interested in their reunion. So without getting on to the thing the just thing. yet, what, what, do, what do those, we know a bit about the PFC, or people have probably forgotten, what are those brain bits, which is the anatomical term, do? And if you could do it with that boring list, then everyone will be happy. Brain bits? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think the people listening to this podcast are comfortable with the PFC, prefrontal cortex, being a main area of those higher order executive functions, the things we do that dogs and crocodiles don't do. But processing inputs, decisions and outputs, that's processing, we need to use executive functions quite a bit, and specifically from the PFC, per hook. That includes, uh, I've, a, I've got an interesting list. Flags no, on. no, no. A, attention control. There are millions, trillions and terabytes of signals coming. When people say there's a terabyte of information coming into our brain, I don't know what that means. I don't understand the concept, so I, I've never understood it. I don't know what it means. So there are there are lots of things coming, unthinkably large amounts of stuff mm. coming into our sensory organs thing all of the time. Certainly yours. Them. Was... Normally out of them. <laughs> oh, what? And <laughs> I've just got one big one. And we have to, like, Casper the Friendly Ghost, James. And we have to dismiss... <laughs> Most of those things, mm. we have to then choose one of them and stick with it in tasks that require fast information processing, reading, responding to auditory cues. The ability to direct that attention is absolutely critical. And the faster the pufka, the prefrontal cortex, can direct and maintain. Just hang, just, right, hang on a minute. You I asked earlier, pufka. you asked yeah. earlier, can I shorten prefrontal cortex to PFC? If yeah. you now add the accumulative amount of time we've spent with you saying PFC, Pufka, yeah. prefrontal cortex, PFC, it's added time, Alex. You know, what I like is when you take an abbreviation like PFC and turn it into an acronym, which is a word. So Pufka. And, and that's what I'm trying to normalize. This, this is why we things. don't win awards, isn't it? It's one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's why we're hem we hemorrhage listeners on a weekly basis <laughs> as well. <laughs> what's weird is that we don't. That's what's weird, not that we do. Mm. The faster the puff cut can, can direct attention, maintain attention, the quicker we process things. Mm. B, oh no, I started with A. Two, God knows, working memory. We talked about this loads as well. You know about long-term memory and short-term memory, so like revision for an exam or something. Well established in general and in, in processing things, but that super short-term scribble pad in front of your eyes, that working memory is also integral to processing speed. It supports mm -hmm. the temporary storage of information while you make a decision or you formulate an action. If you're interpreting a sequence of events, so if I say to you one, two, three, four, the, the PFC manages working memory to ensure information is readily available. Five, five James, I could see you thinking. Um, <laughs> What I love is I actually could. Your eyes went up to the left. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Yep. I've got to fess up. Yep. <laughs> e. Or we also use that for spotting patterns, which is the same thing. If pattern spotting requires working memory and long-term memory, same thing. If you hold something in your working memory and compare it to a fixed pattern that you've already remembered, that is what pattern spotting kind of is. It's like if you hold a swatch of material to a photograph of your library or your drawing room, James, or your cellar. It's like that. God, I you're you. <laughs> C. Damn, that's the right one. Cognitive mm. flexibility. 
Processing speed is not just linear thinking, not just one, two, three, four, five. It often involves rapidly switching between different thoughts, different stimuli, um, and that's cognitive flexibility. Shall I do this or shall I stay on track? Shall I change? What's the right thing to do? Um, thinking outside the box, ironically. The Pufka allows individuals to shift attention from one task. Up. I can see the the, <laughs> the Pufka, it's, it's, it's a thing. That allows us to shift attention from one task or one piece of information to another, if your circumstances mm. demand it or you want to just change something. And finally, for the main brain bits, James, TM, <laughs> inhibitory control. You don't want all those millions of information bits to be taking your attention. You have to shut stuff down. Efficient brain processing requires us to inhibit the irrelevant thoughts or responses. And the Pufka plays a key role in inhibitory control. Um, are there any other, and again, Alex, this is the correct yeah. anatomical term, brain yeah. bits involved? Brain. When you do, because we did a book, didn't we, James? When you do mm -hmm. the book, and we didn't want to use the Latin words, but we wanted people to be exposed to them, ding. So we translated them, and they pretty much all translate to that, don't they? The, the fronty bit yeah. behind the backy bit or mm. whatever. Bra brainius biticum. It's fucking all of them, probably. The, bit the PFC bit bit come. <laughs> ding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, biticum. The, the PFC is interconnected with, with the regions of the brain through white matter tracts, bundles and neurons connecting different parts of the brain. And that allows for this rapid connection, communication between the prefrontal cortex, just behind the, the right hand side, mostly of your of your forehead, remember, to the mm. other bits. It's like spaghetti, spaghetti junction, isn't it? But less shit. Mm. Sorry, Bernie. <laughs> I like spaghetti junction. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. It was like a funny joke about it's But a, I like it's a, bit. It, it's a bit shit, you've got to admit. I like it. Anyway, um, I suppose because you've not derailed it, we better get to the, oh, yeah. the thing then, the ADHD bit. About time too, Bob. I did mean to. I forgot. Everybody wants the accent, don't they? No. 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 <laughs> We've talked before about the persistent and often toxically misleading ways ADHD is represented pretty much everywhere, including that we are fucking quick thinkers because we can think on our feet and come up with creative new ideas, lots of different ideas, bam, 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 quicker than James can drain a victim's neck. No. This might be the bit where we get called negative on the internet, James. I think it might No. Be. I don't know why we do. Ne negative? I know. It's I never, that's never been hurled at me, that accusation. I don't think it could be. In the real world, at least for those of us that don't have super ADHD, again, I'm, not, I'm starting to think I don't have ADHD, I've got something else, just something shit. One of the cognitive characteristics often said about ADHD with adults is that we think quickly. One of the medically noticed things about ADHD is on average, not all of you, you don't have to, mm. is that we have a slower processing speed. Alongside those core symptoms of ADHD, a slow cognitive tempo, sect, scat, scat. <laughs> and, and we have delayed processing speed. This is increasingly recognized as significant components mm. of the ADHD profile, particularly if you're an inattentive presentation or combined presentation ADHD, which, let's face it, almost every single one of us mm. is. Um, did, Russell Barkley purports this idea that, that slow cognitive tempo is ADHD, doesn't he? Mm. And, oh, I went all excited then. I don't think he's saying it's like a, a hypothesis, not a theory. So he's not wedded to it. Ooh, a recent meta-analysis, that's one of the good big ones, of looking at 47 different mm. studies reported that significantly slower response or reaction times in adults with ADHD were repeatedly reported. So they have a test called the trail making test. And that shows that adults with ADHD need a bit more time, but significantly more time on average. Significantly mm. to science people doesn't mean always mean large. It just means mm. it's probably statistically accurate. It's not just mm. just because you've only checked with two people. So we need significantly more time than people with our ADHD on processing speed and slower reaction times. Other studies show worse performance in, in ADHD uh, participants for the hearing processing of, of hearing auditory informational processing and that is even true annoyingly in medicated adults with ADHD 
which to be honest, I really, really recognize because I love the things that the medication has helped me to do. Mm. So for example, survive. It's a big one and not drink, but it isn't a cure by any manner of means. Mm. And, and the meds don't help me process auditory information. And it would appear that that, or that's anecdotal, but it would appear mm. that much by the literature. So we perform more poorly when medicated on visual tracking, reaction times, poor balance. James, there are studies mm -hmm. that show no difference at all between ADHD adults and adults because, of course, that's science. So uh, he says this, um, not having paid attention to the script, so not knowing the context. Why, Alex, is this the case? And I don't mean... Do you know I think what? I don't mean... Why is what the case, James? Sorry. Exactly. I'm Did trying to work out. What? I'm trying you, to work out. Mean? Is the you... case? Shut <laughs> yeah. up. I'm trying to work out. Is the case that I'm asking <laughs> you to clarify the, the, the difference between papers that say there are differences and not differences, <laughs> no. or just why we have pre, pre slow processing speed? I've got no. I think fucking you mean idea. the first one. No, the yeah, second one. Almost the, the, the first one is that some some all the papers have got money. Really great mm. scientists out there doing great work. Some of them showing different things to 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 the majority but it doesn't mean it's bad science it often means it's underfunded science and so all of these papers you're going to get different results and we have to look mm. that's what science is it's not a clear answer some papers are better than others james you might not know that james texted me on friday <laughs> listing the reasons why we need to make videos to explain this to people mm. um and so yeah but i think i think what and i can't stress this enough literally you wrote in the script is why is it that people with ADHD have slower processing speeds? Mm, yeah, and the reason, James, if you were listening to the first part that we co-wrote, no, executive functions and the PUFCA are central mm. to this, and we know other neurotransmitters are available. Our dysfunctional dopamine yeah. is that likely involved. Me. Was that was that me? Popamine. What do you think? Do you think I wrote oh, popamine? You know, that's that's amazing. That's that's got to go in there somewhere. Popamine. <laughs> popamine. <laughs> oh, popamine's probably involved amongst others. <laughs> that's motivation, reward, regulation of attention. That's what activity of the neurons that are activated by dopamine is what we actually mean. Those mm. neurons are heavily involved in all of those classic attentional processing things and reduced dopamine activity in the PUFCA, prefrontal cortex, and also the basal ganglia in the middle, which is the movement, emotions, and lots of other things, can slow down the brain's ability to process information efficiently. Mm. Sluggish performance on tasks. I like the word sluggish. That's how I describe mm. snails, James. Um, sluggish performance on tasks that demand quick thinking or rapid response times. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit confused because at the start of that paragraph you said popamine, but then you mentioned something called dopamine. Are they, are they two different <laughs> <Yeah>. things? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, you get them from eating tryptophan on the internet, or oh my god, the number of science bros on the internet releasing videos saying you have to eat this and you get more dopamine in the blood, in the blood, and, in the and it doesn't cross the. Yeah, and it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, so it doesn't get into the brain. 80% <laughs> of serotonin is for good motility. It's for eating. Mm. You know, it's just, oh, my Christ. Well, they're in cry. Okay, right. Mm. Have you noticed we're completely ignoring American politics today, by the way? I can't even, can you? I just, I'm blanking it out. Um, oh. Yeah, I've given up on it. Um, is it my bit? Yes, it is. So, Alex, yeah, in, in, a yes, complete, in a completely naturalistic and, and non-prepared yeah. way, how, how might this have an impact, kind of, you know, day to day? It turns out Sam disrupts this less than I thought she did. <laughs> yeah. Gloriously, massively, nice. the activity of dopaminergic, that's what we call these neurons activated by dopamine. I like the word dopaminergic. Dopaminergic. Po Dopaminergic, yeah. Um, impact us in, in so many ways. Slow processing, speed, you know, understanding instructions, especially verbal instructions. Think about how that is when you're told something and you really care and you've asked the fucking question. Excuse me, how does this work? <laughs> Christ. We, we, we take longer to complete some jobs and not others. We respond in conversation sometimes more slowly. 
And slowness is not a lack of intelligence or even understanding mm. or desire, but it reflects, not always, but reflects our reduced efficiency in processing information. And also not always, it's on average. It's mm. bloody frustrating for us, but it's, it's frustrating for my wife and, and anybody around us, really. Tasks that seem so simple, so straightforward. I mean, they take a long time sometimes, and you can't predict which one. And it, I think it affects my self-esteem a lot. And we know that people with ADHD on average have problems with self-esteem and certain areas of self-esteem. And mm. it, it really hits me, and especially at school. Individuals may feel they are less intelligent when, apart from James, they are not less intelligent. They're just not. Yeah, I mean, they are, they are all more intelligent than me, but that's not a high bar to reach. Um, no. Okay, that's that. Next is the next bit. And we'll see you in that bit. Bye bye. Goodbye. See you in a bit. No. Alex. Hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Welcome back to episode 177 of the ADHD adults, or at least two of them. Mm -hmm. Part two. We're talking ADHD and processing speed. As always, in part two, possibly, I can't remember what we used to do, we're talking personal reflections. James doesn't have a reflection, but he has some thoughts on processing speed. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and we're going to do tips as well. Why have we done 177 episodes and I've never done James doesn't have a reflection? Madness. Uh, yeah, it's a good one, actually, because in the hotel room in Brighton where I'm staying, there's a bit that I thought was a mirror. And when I didn't have a reflection for a second, <laughs> I actually genuinely went, oh, God. <laughs> Am I a vampire? Exactly. or is it a, a window holy shit yeah um, basically it is go on then james tell us about how you take in information process it and then do something about it so i'll preface this by saying this this could that there's a you know fair to middling chance that everything I'm, I'm about to say is utter bollocks but i don't think this is an issue for me as you say on average we have slower processing speed i've always felt and you'll laugh at this alex heartily but i've always felt that my brain processes really quickly and that means taking information making decisions which are reasoned and not impulsive very quickly and then being able to implement them i i don't have i know we covered auditory processing i generally don't have issues with the speed of auditory processing um and this is one of the reasons, you know, you and I, and you're probably going to say something like, oh, I'm shit at processing speed and I've got a balloon-shaped head. But this is one of the reasons that when you and I do talks, for example, and you've got no idea what the questions are, that we can very quickly respond by taking that information, thinking about the, uh, processing it, and then giving out an answer that's not complete bollocks. I would, I would say that's probably part of having, you know, at least normal processing speed. And this is, I guess this is separate, <laughs> but I honestly feel like sometimes I disconnect my mouth. I feel like there's a semi-ding in there and just mm -hmm. let words come out because it's quicker than thinking. <laughs> um, I don't think that's processing speed. I just think that's a very risky way to be a science communicator. The <laughs> When information comes in, whether it's um, you know, visual, whether it's something I read, and this is really important, as long as I am not distracted, as long as I am not doing something else like on my phone and Sam will come in and say something and, I, and again, I won't hear because of uh, focus and then if she says it again because I haven't managed to task switch fully from that task, I may process it more slowly. But apart from if I'm really distracted or if I haven't slept, which let's face it is maybe one of the reasons we do have slow processing speed is you know, 66 to 80% of us basically don't sleep. It doesn't help. Um, I, like I say, I genuinely feel that I can critically assess information, opportunities, decisions, and ideas really quickly. And therefore, I think I'm probably in that bell-shaped ding curve. If there is one in ADHD, it would be more towards the right-hand side, I guess. Um, you can challenge that now before I give a tip, ding, if you want. I mean, you are. Oh, I feel sick. You are a very clever you're not stupid you're very i can't do it <laughs> yeah i mean just, just in general you are obviously able to process information but we talked about this before james i i see you more it's th things like auditory processing 
which mm. I struggle with massively. I think that your need to make people happy is mm. you will br brute force auditory processing at quite an extreme mental and physical cost to make people feel good about themselves, to feel happy, which I don't do because I'm a fucking psychopath. <laughs> but but I, I sometimes wonder whether you're good at it or whether you make yourself do it. A bit like the, the classic girl, clever girl in school making everyone happy because because they can't bear the thought of not doing that and then they break down and they, yeah i wonder whether it's I, was, like I, I had sex with the clever girl at school jesus that was over, that was over sharing she obviously wasn't that clever um <laughs> yeah different types I, of intelligence isn't it yeah exactly she clearly didn't have me um i well, why what was the decision making processing to say that out loud on a recorded podcast there, yeah, again, there wasn't one. That was impulsivity. That yeah, was just try and try and think of something funny about. I, originally, I was going to say I was a clever girl at school, but that's inappropriate and not funny. Um, yeah, it's I'm an gonna, '80s joke, isn't it? It is. I'm going to knock this back to you and say that obviously I'm a people pleaser, and obviously I do my best to make sure. It, it, maybe in that scenario, you know, you, when I do a talk, you know, you know the talks I do. You know. Little, oh, little, little talks. talks yeah little talks yeah and i obviously you know want people to get an answer which is satisfactory but i st still i think would maintain that partly because it gives me i think it gives me dopamine we've said this before i like a bit of jeopardy when it comes yeah. to not knowing what i'm being asked it's one of the reasons i changed the, the slides for my little talks before every single talk because if I know what's coming next all the way through, it's, it's not as rewarding. And I like to be able to think on my feet and think, right, okay, I've used an emoji instead of um, describing something. What the fuck was I meant to talk about? Oh, hang on a minute. Well, yeah, yeah it's probably that. And therefore I think, nice. Is it Lisa texting you telling you to Sorry. fuck off? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I, so, yeah, we can agree to disagree. Anyway, my tip, Alex, Ding, yeah. Yeah. is... It's it's about, I think it comes down to emotional acceptance, but it's about if you feel safe to do so, it is okay to explain your processing speed to people important to you. Because as you said, it can be frustrating for other people, almost as frustrating as it can be for us. So if, for example, somebody delivers a lot of information and expects a quick response, it's okay if you're in that place where you, you're safe enough to disclose ADHD to say, so sorry, I'm, I'm going to need some time to process that. And this is something that particularly for those in our community that are already HD, and I've learned so much of this from Sam, that I have to give her time to process things, which is why we've got, you know, change alarm if something's going to change. And I even have to say light alarm when I'm turning the light on. But if I know she's going to have to consider something, I'll have to say, um, this isn't going to happen now, but we'll have a chat later about this thing and give her time to to process that information because Sam's processing speed is to the left side of that bell shaped curve. <laughs> what a really so brilliant way of saying it. <laughs> so it's so listen, if you feel safe to it, it's genuinely okay to explain that you need time to process that information and then you'll come back to someone. Yeah, well, um, I think that's what about you, monkey face? Well, you used to call me ferret, didn't you? Or weasel or something. Very slightly shooting <laughs> front teeth. It was a it, it hurt me. Um so one thing that isn't my personal reflections as such, but it's a meta reflection, is is the breaking of the link between processing speed and intelligence. Hmm. Um, they used to say, "Oh, they're slow, didn't they?" Or, or somebody's slow, and they they meant stupid. And and hmm. and it's it isn't an insult to be a bit slow. I I have hmm. a slow processing speed in some areas. It's why I don't do James can't ah James can't read jokes because I was trying to do James's thick jokes, which you know is, is what we do. It's bants. But actually, it was in, it was intended in a funny way. But it isn't funny to people who have slow mm -hmm. auditory or re, sorry reading processing speeds and and reading fluency is cultural based. It's process based. It's not intelligence. And it's yeah, it, starting to realise that things like that we have to change what we do. Like the you know oh I was an eighties like girl clever girl at school like, like it's risible. It, it, we have <laughs> to move away from that, um, which is why we we separate them. That, that was really earnest. I'm sorry. Something, something tits ding. Yeah. From a personal perspective, I'm not a stupid man. 
I'm, mm. I'm, I'm probably, uh, you know, I've, I've got, I'm a professor. I'm probably above average intelligence. And sometimes I'm really, really quick. Definite double ding. Ding, yeah. But in other ways, some of my ability to process information is phenomenally slow. Mm. It's, it's treacle. And I think, yeah, sorry. No, no. Remember, you're not Sam, and you don't have to indicate when my hand goes up. Um, yeah, that's true. You might be, I may be just discovering what you were about to say, but do you yeah. know which particular types of information you are slower at processing? And I think we should think about processing as more than one bell shaped curve because people who are down on themselves see themselves bad mm. at one thing and extrapolate that to everything, which isn't true, mm. especially people who are in, incredibly empathic. You know, if they're not able to read and they're incredibly empathic, for me, that's more valuable and they're likely to earn more money. <laughs> and I know it's not about that, but the, the, but we, as a society and at school and, and in lots of things, we accidentally value academic intelligence that I have over emotional intelligence, empathy, like, the ability to to feel empathy mm. that I really really don't and so I think that I am fairly clear on uh, auditory processing I'm horrible at horrible I, I, I partly work in memory but partly mm. it, it frustrates the life out of me it I thought I was bad at languages and I'm, I'm really not it's probably my the thing I'm best at but I thought I couldn't do it and one of the reasons was because they would play a video, a recording, and they play it twice, and it says Pierre goes into the bank and uh, buys cheese, and Sophie walks into the boulangerie and doesn't. And then they say, what does Pierre do? And I'm like, I don't know who that was. And I would fail. Hmm. And I thought it was because I hadn't understood the French, but I had. And And... And, and it's not fair, and they, they still mm. do it today when you have to take your German tests. I, it's pretty good at French. I mean, conversational German, speak Italian, a bit of Latin, and I've done it in a different way. I've had to do it without auditory processing because I, I cannot do it. And I, I think that's the thing. But we, we I also think linearly. When mm. sometimes the way you think, James, creatively, aesthetically, sometimes you can, you're 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 better than me. I think at, at creative thought. I don't understand it. If you just stop that sentence after the word me, you're better than yeah, me. Yeah, you're better than me. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> I'm not better, taller. Sorry, taller. Yeah. <laughs> and and older. I I when I'm on on stage or doing one of your little talks for you, medium size, I like the questions as well, but I can't do what you can do. I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. So mm. what I do, and this is my top tip. I absolutely stay on task and I don't apologize for it. Don't know is the first thing I will say. Mm. Great question. <clears throat> don't know. I'll look it up or I won't. Mm. I, I, I have really clear boundaries. You've said that before, haven't you? That I am really clear what my boundaries are. I'm really clear. I prepare everything. So I always have a core message. ADHD, it's fine because it's my hobby. But if somebody asks me a question that I haven't got the answer to, I just go back to that. That isn't a question I can answer right now. I, I, I cannot do it. If I put myself in a position of having to think on my feet, especially if it's emotional, the doctor says something I haven't prepared in writing what I'm going to say. I, I tell them about William Rufus or something. And, and mm. I, I, I'm very, I find it very difficult to process. That was William the Conqueror's son, James. I mean, I should have guessed, really, shouldn't yeah, I? Red hair. Something to do with with re regality? No, that's not a word, is it? Um, oh, yeah. Are you, are it, you it, done? He wasn't literally called Rufus. He had red hair. He, his surname was oh. the second. Oh, Jesus Christ! His surname was the second. Are you so done? My top tip is prepare yeah. on in writing <laughs> if you need to. Clear on your main on the main things you want to hear. Write your boundaries down and write what you're able to say in advance and and ask people to check in with you if you're mm. able to listen right now that's or or to read right now or to if you're not ask for more time you know or a different time are you are you are you able to perceive me <laughs> is is it is fine for people to ask if you allow it that's it sorry i know it's too much no time for the game. Shit. It, 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 it was because I actually had a joke when you said it's the thing that I'm best at. And I was going to say something like world's shortest book, but you spoke for like 10 minutes afterwards. And as timing is everything in comedy, 
I had to drop it and then obviously tell you I was going to tell that joke, which is what I do with Sam when I'm going to buy her flowers and don't buy her flowers. I'll actually come in and say, nearly bought you some flowers today, but then I didn't. <laughs> I mean, it's a thing, isn't it? Getting older is, is just each other saying what you nearly bought them for their birthday. Yeah, it is. We, uh, Alex, we have got time for a game, but for you, oh, we'll keep it quick. We'll keep it quick. Ding. Um, so I'm going to just read out what I've got written down, which okay, is guitar. Like it, guitar which yeah. I brought with me to, to Brian for this little talk, but I can't Ooh, play little. it. I can't play it, not because I can't play the guitar for once, um, but because I forgot something. So did I forget plectrum, it says? Yeah. Or, or pick, if you prefer. Did I forget guitar? Or did I forget the power supply for the thing which I need to use, the, the pedals for the guitar? The stem of this question was, I've brought my guitar, guitar with me to Brighton, which oh, I I've think, done it again. I've done it I again. Think, I've, done it, I've given you fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah, but, but we've established that a one in two shot is not a 50-50 chance with no, me. Not for you. Very rarely. I <laughs> think that you've got your big Dracula nails, so you don't need a plectrum. So you've it's power supply. That's what I think. It's, it's an you've electric got one guitar. Right. Yay! You've got one right. By virtue of, yeah. like, even you can play a guitar without a plectrum I, yeah i got it all out last night but everything set up and then went confused can't power plectrum and spectrum okay you've got uh autistic plectrum condition probably alex no, um on, on that pathetic yeah. joke we'll take a break and we'll come back for the last bit which is answering questions not our questions your questions i know she's not here but we still do it see you in a bit i've won one goodbye no Welcome back to part three of episode 177 of the ADH channels podcast, where we're waffling on about ADHD and processing speed, but not in this bit, because this is where we answer your questions. Alex, do you have a question from somebody else? Oh, see, I see. I, Cause I haven't written it. Yeah. You know, you didn't, right. yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. This question is from Kaya and it says, I read that you can't take dexamphetamine over age 60. What happens to people with ADHD when they get into the seventies or eighties? James, is that likely true in the UK? It's, it's a good question because there's a lot of misinformation about ADHD in older mm. adults. And there are actually there's some nice studies looking at ADHD through the lifespan and in older adults. And we've heard, you know, through the charity and through other people, people being told you, you can't be referred if you're over 65, you can't be assessed if you're over 65. But we've also heard from 77 year olds who've been diagnosed and medicated you would imagine that if this was genuinely a thing in the UK, at least, if this was genuinely a thing, then in the NICE guidelines for treatment, medication of ADHD, it would state alongside if there are cardiovascular issues, if there's a previous history of X, Y and Z, it would state an upper age limit. But there's nothing that I've seen in the NICE guidelines, which I read through um, the other day that, that says that there are obviously, as we get older, um, increased chances of things like cardiovascular disease um, and probably increased side effects and what we call polypharmacy. You're more likely to be on multiple medications as we get older, which can complicate things um, for people over the age of 65. But a recent study um, found that uh, it was safe. So that gives us an indication that if people are being told that you can't have stimulants at that age, it's it's that lag between research and practice. That I, I hope that's right. Alex, add something to it. Yeah, I haven't heard of that either. I mean, obviously, there is a concern around the cardiovascular effects on us of, of Lisdex amphetamine, which is what they tend to prescribe now if, rather than Dex, because De Dex amphetamine isn't as, as long lasting. So what about, could it be related to your chances of having heart issues or needing an ECG or, or blood pressure or something like that? So it's less likely, maybe? I don't know. Mm -hmm. we'll we'll keep our eyes open shall we james and have a look it's a good question Kaya. yeah we'll we'll also we'll ask nick as well and see what he says oh, yeah, our, great, uh, yeah. nick, nick britchford the um the triple threat rocking horse shit um uh yeah. of that sounds like a nasty thing but if you can remember nick he's adhd gp yeah. and psychiatrist so he yeah yeah amazing and things. trustee of adhd mm -hmm. uk charity which is very helpful yes um right then We've kind of dealt with that. So question two yeah. is from Dr. Wanadu, which I love the name, or also known as Adele. It says, loving the podcast as ever. You mention fight and flight in the stress episode. How important is it 
for neurodivergent folk to consider their response to stress in terms of freeze and especially fawn, people pleasing as a, a stress response. Is there any research around this that you might recommend? Alex? Oh, oh that's you as well, isn't it, really? It's something you think about a lot, isn't it, these sorts of things? So you go. Yeah. So, so we have something called an autonomic nervous system. And that autonomic nervous system uh, has two branches, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic You're right, science system, is boring. It is. The, fucker. the sympathetic <laughs> nervous system drives the fight or flight response. So that is getting you ready to deliver blood to muscles, um, dilating the pupils, increasing ding. the heart rate, ding, to get you ready to either run away or, or to fight. And the or parasympathetic... Bang. Or, or bang, bang, no, bang, no, the no. it's the opposite, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah, because that's rest and digest or feed and breathe. And the parasympathetic nervous system kind of does the opposite. So it moves blood towards the stomach so that you can eat towards the engorged organs and other genitals so that you might be able to engage in coitus. Um, but there are other kind of aspects to these phrases, fight or flight, rest and digest, feed or breathe. So... The freeze aspect of fight or flight is also known as attentive immobility. And, and that is that it's a fight or flight response which has been put on hold. It's, it's a holding stage before you start to see the sympathetic nervous system kick in. And the fawn side of things, people pleasing as a stress response, is more commonly associated with trauma than it is with ADHD. But again, more research needed there's also if you're aware something called flop as well um i wanted to say ding yeah I will ding um but you know the freeze and, and and flop aren't well researched in terms of neurology they're really not and they're not well established in so we criticize don't we oh why did you just freeze you know in a time of violence or mm. threat and and we don't entirely understand it and it, it feels like it could be a uh, basal ganglia response processing mm. response right to the mm. the you make a decision or you don't know what to do so you don't make a, a physical decision you just mm. freeze and it could definitely be part of processing which is bang on trend for this episode it's really mm. good thank you james uh, do you have Can a question, you Alex? Question? Yeah, did you write it's it? It's or... from Brian Brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't know it's from Brian Brain, James. It's from, it's from I'm Brian and so is my wife, which is <laughs> a guy. Monty Python reference if you're not old. And it says, I couldn't sleep and I'm tired, so I don't have the energy to make this funny. Sorry, I know that's what you bellends are into. <laughs> you are right. I wanted to know if there's any link between ADHD and compulsive secrecy. Mm. I find that when I'm stressed or overwhelmed by life, I will resort to secretive behavior like smoking and hiding it from my family. More than just a chemical dependence, it feels equally like an addiction to covering it up. Is it common in the ADHD shit storm or am I just a basket case? Cheers, fuckers. What a brilliant question. It is. I, I take it from the tone that you said with that, that you're going to pass that to me, but I'm going to pass it straight back, Alex, and say, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, I think it's, I think it is more common. Well, it's not just ADHD, mm -hmm. but it's more common. And I think it's partly because of the things you've said that the, 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 the motivation and reward to uncertain anticipation of getting found out or doing something that that maybe is secretive mm. risk measuring and all of those things but i would also say that and i've said this many times before that people with adhd don't tend on average to feel safe mm. and when we don't feel safe why in the name of all things holy would we share so i think there's a difference between doing something that you know people won't like at Dim. them or secretively, yeah, and not sharing the things that you would normally share are two different types of secrecy. And I think mm. the first one is a form of, um, if not self-harm, then certainly uh, an attempt to control and and probably. And, and the, the second one, the not sharing, is is might be a form of stress anxiety and mm. uh, lack of safety that would be my guess but it's a really brilliant question that needs a bit more work mm. that I haven't done. go on james you 
hit me with <clears throat> better science. We've, we've heard that there's this, the two things that fascinate me that which you've heard a few times from people. One is the secrecy and the other is compulsive lying. And it's something that a lot of people kind of have asked about. Now, what I would say to I'm Brian and so is my wife is a fucking brilliant name because Life of Brian is possibly the greatest film ever. Yeah, absolutely. And B, how do you feel when you do this? Because for most people, guilt and shame would be the most likely drivers. There's going to be lots of times when people with ADHD know that they're doing something that maybe they shouldn't or that maybe they're not saying... Uh, disclosing that they've done that because of the shame of being you know, caught in a lie or doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. But if you don't feel that guilt and shame and what you feel is reward for the secrecy, if you actually feel, if you like, that it's something that's giving you that sense of control and reward, then that's different from guilt and shame. So that's what I'd say is, is, is ask yourself, when I do this, how do I feel? Do I feel that the driver is guilt and shame or do I actually enjoy the secrecy part? Can I ask you, James, when you, because we, we are oppositional, we're more likely to be oppositional, mm. aren't we, people with ADHD? And and that releases dopaminergic activity. Popaminergic. Kind of, popaminergic, yeah. That fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, that, mm. yeah, I am what you say I am, feeling that, you know, the reason I loved, like, Eminem and people like that as a, a young man, I was like, yeah, fuck it. Is that when you smoke and when you do things that you know you don't want to do? Is that is that part of that that kind of self harm? Oh, it's yeah. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. We said this before. It it is self harm. So I, I like I sent Alex a message the other day after saying I've quit smoking, and he was like brilliant. And then a week later, I sent a picture with a fag saying quitting smoking's going well. A um, week. That's because yeah, a week. But that's because the stress of Sam at the you know I'm dealing with the stress of mum and and it's killing me to see Sam the way she is. Um, and just the stress of all that and i just turned to my coping strategy which is compulsive masturbation um, and occasional cigarettes so it's complicated but a big part of it is self-harm a big part of it when i'm in particularly if i'm in a low mood is i will chain smoke four or five cigarettes because it hurts my throat and because wow. that is a way that's a way of me feeling if you if you know it's a way of taking the, some of the thoughts away because i'm focusing on that um but uh, yeah the the interesting thing for me is because i'm a, a binge eater that the um the secrecy there is definitely guilt and shame so i do have this bias everybody's got biases people you need to acknowledge them i do have this bias towards guilt and shame because of my binge eating so when i binge eat and bury all of the wrappers halfway down the bin so sam can't see them that is secrecy that's driven by guilt and shame. And I don't feel good when I do that, which is why I thought it was useful to ask. I'm Brian, and so is my wife that question. Yeah, it's a really good one. Right. Are we done? I think we're done. Lovely. Yeah. Well, that was episode 177 of the ADHD Adults podcast, where just Alex and I, because Sam's being lazy, talked about ADHD. And I know. <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to get some pelters for that. She and doesn't. no, she doesn't. No, but other people like her, Al, and they oh, will give yeah. me pelters. I know that, that yeah, exactly. Um, that was, which just reminds me, as an aside, you know, in my Instagram promo, it says least popular host of the ADHD Adults podcast. Yeah. Uh, now that gets read out at Seed Talks workshops that I do as my introduction. And it's That's two, brilliant. And it, during October, I did so many fucking talks and stuff and training. It was read out at two of those as well, which just reminds me of when I was on the Trish show and they said, she clearly hadn't read it before. And she said, the podcast inexpertly, inexpertly covers ADHD with Alex, the psychoeducation monkey. And you can see oh, her that's... face as she was reading it out like, what the fuck oh, is this? That's amazing. It's amazing. It is. Anyway, if by the usual miracle you've enjoyed anything about this, then what's wrong with you? <laughs> exactly. Well, we know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, then you can get in touch. There is there are forms on the website, adhdadults.uk, where you can send in letters, you can send in suggestions for topics, you can send in questions. There's details about the book, what we wrote, um, which uh, so far, unlike this podcast, hasn't had any bad pre-release reviews, has it? So... <laughs> that's looking please, good so far please don't please don't review it yeah. as a horrible in a horrible way for a joke it's, oh it's 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 gonna happen anyway 
Um, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye all. So you haven't proofread. When I came up with the idea for ADHD Unpacked, James, as a book. No, well, I... no, 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 yes. no. No, I... you, didn't, you didn't come up with a name. This is, yeah, okay, right. this is the podcast again, isn't it? This is the, it was my idea for the podcast. It was your idea for the book. Well, it, was, it wasn't, no, it, no, it was, but, but, it was but, me but, raised. Don't make... Yeah. <laughs> no, but the original name was slightly different, but very similar. And I said to you, that name is just a placeholder. And we'll change it for something that's not shit later on. I can, this may be positive illusory bias or something, but I can definitely remember saying that to you. Agree to disagree. I, I, I'm not wedded to this opinion. <laughs> but I mean, you. Good. The useful thing is that you can actually remember anything that's written in it because I can't remember a fucking word that's in that it. book. If you yeah, haven't read straight. it, <laughs> you wrote it. And then, I'll never that'll do. do. And I never will. Seven mistakes when I proofread it just before public. You know the. the... I think that. I think that's good. Yeah. I wonder how many we've missed. Lots. We need Sam back.